So are you still wondering if intra workout nutrition works? Well, stay tuned and you're going to find out. All right, thanks everyone for joining. Again, we're talking about my favorite topic, which is intra workout nutrition. I love talking about it. Um, I've been talking about it for, I don't know, probably 10 to 15 years now. And uh, I came across a really cool study that somehow doesn't get talked about a lot. And I don't know why, this is one of the best studies I've ever seen. It was done by uh, Stephen A. Bird. And basically uh, what they looked at was combining essential amino acids and carbohydrates uh, during a workout and they essentially wanted to see if it resulted in gains, right? That's what we all want, we want gains. This is one of the best studies I've ever seen. So they took 32 guys, they gave them eight exercises and they had them do 70% uh, of their, 70% uh, of their max they did three sets of um, three sets of ten. So these were like that's like a legitimate workout. Some of these studies you see, it'll just be a set of leg extensions or whatever. This is like a legitimate workout. And they separated it into four groups. They had a placebo group. They had a group that just used essential amino acids. A group that just used carbohydrates, and a group that for in a fourth group that used essential amino acids and carbohydrates. And the other interesting thing about this study was that um, a lot of times in these studies you'll see people talk about the acute response, so what happened right after the study. And they make all these conclusions, or sometimes they don't really make conclusions, they just say this is what we observed. But really what you want to know is what would happen after four weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks. So they actually continued this study and, and they actually had a 12 week, uh, a 12 week study. So they had a short term look at it, what the results were, and had a long-term uh, view on it. And the long-term view was really, really powerful. It was, again, a very well put together study, controlled their diets, they, everything was very, very, very controlled. And long story short, um, some of the things you think would happen, happened. For example, the group that uh, took carbohydrates and the group that took essential amino acids and carbohydrates, they showed increased levels of insulin, right? You would expect that from the carbohydrates. But the, the really cool thing is, is it showed a very big impact on cortisol. And um, the people who, the people who, the placebo group that didn't have that, they had over a, a little over 100% increase in cortisol levels after training, and then the levels stayed pretty elevated, uh, even for, even up to 48 hours later. Whereas the group that had um, carbohydrates and the group that had carbohydrates and essential amino acids had a, um, not only did they not have a big cortisol spike, they were actually 27% lower um, shortly after the workout. So it was pretty, pretty incredible. And the reason why that is important is because, in my opinion, that equates to less muscle protein breakdown. At the end of the day, you want to be in what's called an anabolic state, and that means your muscle protein synthesis, building you know, muscle, is higher, or there's more of that, than muscle protein breakdown. And when you train, you're breaking down muscle. So you're controlling this breakdown, you're controlling cortisol output, and it would seem to make that equation favorable. Now that all sounds logical, but sometimes things that sound good don't necessarily play out on paper. So let's continue. Um, by the way, they also measured 3-methylhistidine. That is a marker for muscle protein breakdown. And the group, again, that had the placebo drink, really high levels of it, and the group that used essential amino acids and insulin, really low levels of it. So again, we saw a direct correlation with muscle protein breakdown, okay? Now, um, at the end of the 12 weeks, really what you gotta look at is you gotta look at muscle. Was there new muscle? So they looked at the cross-sectional area of the muscle, and guess what? So the essential amino and insulin groups had the highest, and it was significantly higher than the placebo group, uh, increases in muscle size. And not only that, um, so I'll give you the, some of the numbers. So the group that 
that placebo gained about, it was a little under two kilograms of muscle over the 12 weeks, which is actually pretty good. And you would, exp and these, the other thing I should mention is that these were untrained, uh, untrained men. And I actually, I like that because if you've ever started a weight training program, think about how sore you got. Um, so you would expect, you would expect gains and you would also expect to get real sore and have a lot of muscle protein breakdown. So I like the fact that they weren't super experienced. Studies like this would be a little bit more difficult to do on someone who's trained for 20 or 30 years. So the group that just used a placebo, they actually gained, not quite, but I think it was a little less than two kilograms of muscle over the 12 weeks. Well, the group that used the essential aminos and the insulin um, well, the carbohydrates to drive insulin. So the carbohydrates, which by the way was Gatorade, and um, six grams of essential aminos, they actually gained a little over four kilograms of muscle. So what that means mathematically is the people who used carbohydrates and EAAs intra-workout had twice the gains, more than double the gains of the people who used the placebo, which was like flavored water. So it was, a, again, a very, very well done study. I don't know that I've seen a study done that was that solid, that it was controlled that well. And I've always felt like, based on the results of myself and my clients, I've always felt like intra-workout nutrition, for those who train really hard uh, in particular, was a good way to uh, maintain that anabolic state and also to not be... Uh, is beaten up and broken down so you can actually train with a higher frequency. I've always felt like that was one of the keys. Uh, and even if you're a beginner and you're starting out, um, and, I, and I've never you know, really said those are the folks that really need a lot of this, but you could even make the case for a beginner, is if they're training hard, that this actually can help. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, obviously, my product is called uh, Recovery Factor, and it has six grams of essential amino acids, the exact amount that was in the study, and that happened purely by coincidence, by the way. I wasn't aware of that study when, um, when I created this formula. And I also have um, a carbohydrate in it that increases your insulin, but it doesn't peak it and valley it. It just gives you, it doesn't spike it. It just gives you a nice steady level of insulin release, which is what you want. So anyways, thanks for listening. Um, again, if you want to look this study up, it's Stephen, it's called The Independent and Combined Effects of Liquid Carbohydrate Slash Essential Amino Acid Ingestion on Hormonal and Muscular Adaptations Following Resistance Exercise uh, Training in Untrained Men by Stephen Bird and also Tarpenning. Tarpenning is another name. If you follow the studies, you, you hear that name a lot. And it's in the European Journal of Applied Physiology. And it was in published in uh, 2006. So thanks for listening. Give Intra Workout Nutrition a shot and you won't be disappointed.